A Winnipeg family is looking for answers after their grandson, who they were told had been killed in a homicide, showed up at their front door alive and well. What the details tonight, CTV's Danton Unger joins us now live. Danton, what happened here? Well, Mary Lee, that's what the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner is trying to figure out. The family tells us they were told that a, hom a homicide victim had been identified as their grandson through dental records, but about a week later, he rang his dad's doorbell to tell his family he wasn't dead. I opened the door and there were two big police officers. <laughs> Judy Penchenko's world came crashing down when two police officers showed up at her door in May. He proceeded to say not only was Peter dead, but he had been murdered. Judy and her partner Cheryl Cook were told their grandson Peter had been identified through dental records as the victim of a homicide after a body was found in the Point Douglas area on April 27th. I said it's not Peter. Mm -mm. And, I, and they're looking at me and I said I'm telling you. Peter will never go downtown. Another reason for doubt, Judy and Cheryl say they got a text message from Peter on May 8th, more than a week after he was supposedly killed. And I kept saying, are you sure? And they're saying, yes, we're 99.9% .9 sure this is Peter. A spokesperson for the Winnipeg Police tells CTV News officers had visited the family to request DNA samples to confirm the identity with 100% certainty. Judy and Cheryl, meanwhile, contacted friends and family about the death. That is until Peter showed up on his dad's front doorstep alive and well. The family says Peter, who lives a nomadic life, had been completely unaware. His friends told him, you got to get a hold of your dad. Oh, yeah, because they, they think you're dead. In a statement to CTV News, the Office of Manitoba's Chief Medical Examiner says misidentification of a decedent is extremely rare, if not unprecedented. When we need to identify someone who's unrecognizable, we use scientific means such as fingerprints, dental records, and DNA. We're looking into the circumstances of what happened so that it won't happen again. At the time of the killing, police had asked for the public's help to identify the victim with a spokesperson telling CTV News the body was badly burned. Alberta forensic anthropologist Pamela Maincoria says identification does become more challenging when remains have been burned. Lots of times with burned remains or, or cremated remains that are very, very severe, it's a tentative uh, identification, not a positive. The whole ordeal has left the family with a range of emotions. Uh, happy, mm -hmm. pleased that he's alive, angry with the coroner and what happened. They oh, want answers as to how this friends. mistake happened like and what's being done to make sure it never happens again. It was so horrible, so horrible, so horrible. And they had it so bloody wrong. There's mm -hmm. the thing, they had it so wrong. Now, the Winnipeg police tell CTV News it has since established the identity of the victim in the homicide and is working with the victim's family to confirm that. Winnipeg police have charged 23-year-old Tyrus Mann with second-degree murder in connection with the homicide. Uh, the charges against him have yet to be proven in court.